Hello friends, family, random strangers on the internet to another edition of our ARC Roundup. This one is flop edition. <laughs> That's probably mean of me to say but I just thought that it was interesting that I have some really lowly rated arcs here, some things that I have some strong feelings about, uh, and do it for the clickbait. Now the question is, what order should we go in? Should we go from nice to mean or mean to nice? Let's go from nice to mean because I uh, accidentally, <laughs> I got uh, impulse shopped into purchasing Kiss Her Once For Me by Alison Cochran. I read this as an arc in August, let's say. And I gave it three stars. This one I think is a lot expectations versus execution because this is sold as a while well, you were sleeping retelling which is one of my favorite movies a Sandy Bullock classic. Christmas go watch it right now but I do also just think that it's beautiful. Wow it looks so small in the frame. Uh countdown until that falls down. Um but I thought that this was good just I had some problems with it. Let me hit you with some stats first of all. This comes out November 1st 2022. It is 368 pages. I give it three stars. It's probably more like a 2.5. I've already talked about this in a vlog so you can go watch that if you are interested but basically this is a enemies to lovers slash marriage to convenience. Like it's got all of the tropes that you could possibly want in it but it becomes a bit too muddled and I never fully bought into the relationship between our two leads. And I think the big thing that broke this book for me, especially compared to Alison Cochran's first book, The Charm Offensive, which I absolutely loved, is this is single POV. And just generally romances are better for me if they're dual. 20% for any real plot to start happening, 50% for anything romantic to happen, so it's just a bit of a slow burn. This also features bits of a webcomic, but there is no comic in here. It's just describing it. And I think that's just such a missed opportunity. Like you can do a little bit of mixed media. You didn't even have to do the whole thing. Just have one panel for each of the flashbacks because our main character is a graphic designer, visual artist. Pet peeve things, but I think it's great for Christmas atmosphere. Lots of great Christmas activities. Uh, and there's a grandma who's high the whole time and I love her. What are their names? Mima and Lovey are the two grandmas and I adore them. That's Kiss Her Once For Me. It's been getting good buzz. Other people really like it. If you're into a sapphic Christmas book, I would recommend it. I'm trying to think what's a comp for this because this is flops. I want to be able to market these to the people who are actually going to enjoy them. I think that While You Were Sleeping is a good comp, especially for the family stuff. I just wish it had more of the family stuff. Being a Christmas romance makes it really hard to come up with comps. It flops on me, but if editing me comes up with something, chill and put it right here. I have been summoned apparently. Uh, the closest I can come up with is American Royals by Catherine McGee, uh, which is a YA royalty romance that I actually really enjoyed, but I think maybe the YA quality changes it. Um, they have common themes of like making your family proud, inheritance stuff, forbidden romance. It's a tough one though. Definitely nothing Christmassy in here. I think they do go skiing though, so that's something. The next book I want to talk about is The Hookup Plan by Farrah Rashawn. This one, it was actually a DNF for me, which I'm very sad about. The comps for this are easy. They're the other books in this series. This is about a group of three women who are all dating the same guy without their knowledge and then they confront him and then all three of the women become BFFs and they each get their own book. And this is the final book in that series. And there are a couple of reasons I DNF'd this. First of all, it's very medical centric. Our main character is a doctor or a resident. And so there's just a lot of talk about healthcare stuff, but also healthcare administration and just like not appealing to me. A little bit of health anxiety, I guess. Uh, so that would didn't appeal, but then also the romance tropes I didn't enjoy because this is called the hookup plan. They hook up within the first two chapters, like very early on. And I'm not a slow burn gal, but it, that's too fast for me. My review on Goodreads right now says that it's a DNF for now, but I think it might be a DNF for forever. 
sorry, you can't see my beautiful shiny book. I'll hold it up more. Next book that we have to talk about is Runtime by Katherine Ryan Hatford. This came out August 16th and it is 386 pages and I gave it two stars. There is an audience for this, but because it's a thriller, it's very hard to discuss. I think that this does have a lot of similarities with Katherine Ryan Howard's previous book, 56 Days. That was a COVID lockdown mystery that I really enjoyed and was very twisty and just something I haven't seen done before. And this is definitely the same kind of thing. I haven't seen this done before. I haven't seen this twist before. Not that I liked it, but I think if you're tired of domestic thrillers, this is a great, slightly different, but still in your real house story. It is Irish too. The author is Irish. So if you listen to the audiobook, you get some great accents. But the big problem with this is just it's very slow to get going. It's probably 50% before any action actually starts happening. And that's just too long for me. It's also a story within a story within a story. The plot of this is that our main character is an actress in a movie which is based off of a screenplay, which are also getting picked up, which is based off of a book within that screenplay and things in the book start happening in the screenplay and things happening in the screenplay start happening in real life. Have I lost you yet? So it is a lot to keep track of. It's not too difficult, but if you're someone who has trouble keeping all those things straight, then so you know. Another big problem with it is just the characters are kind of flat. It's single POV and our main character is just kind of, eh. she's, she's just dull, I think. She's got a dark past that takes a way too long for you to find out what it is for how not dark it is. And there's also this super weird bit where the author includes something because they're shooting a horror movie. A character says something like the story never seems as scary once you're at the end. Sort of, I felt, justifying itself being like, it's not bad, it's just your perception of something. Which I'm sure it wasn't like ill intent or, you know, sassy like I made it, but it struck me as odd. And then I tried to come up with a comp for this. The closest I can kind of think of is The Death of Mrs. Westaway. That was one that was very slow and contained. How do I say both an obvious twist, but also a twist I've never seen before. It, it has layers to it that I also gave Death of Mrs. Westaway two stars. But I think that my stranger comp is I think that this is the anti Last House on Needless Street. Can I say anything more than that? Absolutely not. Uh, if you've read both, maybe you're picking up what I'm putting down, but it, it might just be me. The final book that we have to talk about is one that does not come out until next year. Haha! -ha! This is The Mimicking of Known Successes by Monka Older. It comes out March 7th, 2023, and it is 176 pages. This is a tour novella which should mean that it's a slam dunk. Uh, and I hate, I hated this. This one is very much so me and not the book. And I totally recognize that. But I think that a lot of people who read similar to me will pick this up and be disappointed with similar things that I was. So the pitch of this story is that um, the earth has imploded, not imploded, <laughs> not literally imploded, but like climate disaster and uh, humans have moved into platforms that are above the earth. Um, basically like satellites have become cities and there are rail cars connecting all of them. And our main character, Mosa, is a detective and investigating the disappearance of someone who presumably like went over the side, plummeted into earth. So that's our prologue is Mosa getting introduced to that case and then first chapter starts and it's no longer Mosa's POV it's her college flirt girlfriend I don't know this book is technically sapphic but very subtly so and the whole thing is from her perspective now which is very strange to have like a detective POV who's not a detective it's not that she brings anything else to the role She's just like a really amateur detective who doesn't know anything, which is where the majority of the problem with this book lies is that it's detective fiction, which is something I don't generally enjoy. And also it's very Holmesian. This is definitely trying to be a Holmes and Watson type of pairing. 
and the writing kind of reflects that too. It's very overwritten and the people don't talk like real people. Um, so that was disappointing, but also just very much like you have to know if you're that type of person going into it. And I am definitely not because this book was mostly sold to me as sci-fi. And I think the sci-fi stuff in here is really good. Like the cities are really interesting. The rail system's interesting. They have something called a mausoleum which is a zoo of all reanimated uh, animals. It's Jurassic Park. It's Jurassic Park, but they call it a mausoleum, uh, which is excellent. And there's a lot of interesting science-y stuff in there, but that wasn't enough of the story to counteract all of the things that I didn't like about it because this is a torn novella. So like I have utmost faith in them. I fully acknowledge that it's a me problem and not the book but oh boy did I hate it. I thought the characters were super flat and they have this history like I think they were together at some point in the past but you never really delve into that at all. They don't feel like real people like the way that they talk they're so stilted they're not emotional and that's probably what it's going for but it's just something that I really didn't enjoy. But I think if you are a fan of Sherlock Holmes and Tor novellas, just like any Tor novella, I think that this could be a really good one. In a weird way, and it's extremely different, it kind of reminds me of Babel by R. F. Wong. It's somehow both futuristic and old-timey, and it's very dry. Sometimes it reads like a textbook, all the characters are pretty surface level, but you can still get what you want out of it. Maybe it's the kind of book you get out that you put in and I didn't put in very much. I gave it two stars. Honestly, I could probably give it a one, but because this is a 2023 arc and hardly anybody's read it yet, I'm being generous. Maybe in the future I will go back and change my rating. Anyway, that's it. Those are the last four arcs that I read. I'll update you when I get another one. I hope that you enjoyed this very chatty video and I'll see you later.